Do you dream of studying at a world-class university with an exciting and adventurous life experience? That is what awaits you at SLTC in the Paradise Island of Sri Lanka. Located in the lush suburbs of the city, a 35-acre university of serene greenery, the only state-owned, private sector and corporate-backed university in Sri Lanka. With state-of-the-art accommodation options, feel the warmth of a home away from home. Immerse in the adventure you're looking for at the world's top tourist destination of excitement, beauty and the hub of activity, Sri Lanka. With exceptional teaching, a multitude of study options, plenty of pathways to choose from, a host of international affiliations to back them up, as well as the opportunity to explore your creativity, sports, gym facilities, and natural surroundings. Step into an experience of a lifetime, connecting with the best of the best. Welcome to your Lifetime Experience University. Hello everyone. Welcome one and all to this webinar on marketing library programs, services, initiatives during the time of pandemic and infodemic. I'm Hasita Korlage, librarian from the Sri Lanka Technological Campus and together with the Department of Library and Information Science, University of Kalania, Sri Lanka, we bring to you this webinar to address the impact of COVID-19 and COVID-19 measures on library services and access to information. We are very happy to inform you that we have received more than 600 registrations from uh, 15 countries. Uh, once again, I warmly welcome all of you uh, for the session. Uh, who have represented from uh, China, India, Indonesia, uh, Kazakhstan, Malaysia, Nepal, New Zealand, Nigeria, the Philippines, Saudi Arabia, Sri Lanka, Taiwan, Tanzania, United Arab Emirates, and US. Please rise for the national anthem of Sri Lanka. Come on, look at me. 
I now invite Dr. Namali Surabira, the head of the Department of Library and Information Science at the University of Kelania to address the participant. Welcome you all to the um, International Perspective Seminar on Marketing Library Programs, Services and Initiatives in Time of Infodemic. So the Sri Lanka te Technological Campus is organizing this event in collaboration with the, our department, the Department of Library and Information Science, University of Kalania, Sri Lanka. Actually, um, this current situation means uh, COVID-19 pandemic is um, new to all of us and uh, the way we worked as normal has been changed. So now we have to think about to deliver our services in new way. For example, providing more online services to our users in order to give better services and fulfill their information requirement. So in that situation, I trust organizing uh, such kind of uh, webinar will help our participants definitely to update their uh, understanding and also the, this will help in order to think and act innovatively uh, to provide better services to our customers. So thanks Hasita for collaborating uh, with us in order to organize this event and also our many thanks goes to Joseph Yap. He's the one who a uh, speaker for this event. So thanks for accepting our invitation and I believe this will be a fruitful session for all of us um, and enjoy. Thank you. This webinar seeks to explore initiatives, policies, and measures that we can take to ensure continued access and services for all library users presented to you by esteemed guest speaker, Mr. Joseph Yap. It is my great pleasure now to introduce our guest speaker, Mr. Joseph Yap. Mr. Yap is a senior expert and information literacy coordinator from Nasser Bayev University Library in Kazakhstan. His work on information literacy modules, activities and efforts in raising awareness set a profound example of the progress and development that can be achieved in these areas. Before handing over the session uh, to Mr. Yap, uh, I would like to inform you that uh, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to post them on the wall and I, I can forward to Mr. Yap after the presentation and he will answer as much as possible within the limited, because we have very limited time. So uh, he will try to answer as much as possible and also he will share his email ID so you can directly email to him. Uh, he will, I'm sure he will definitely answer for your query. Thank you very much, Mr. Yap, for being here with us today. Uh, we are most honored. I now hand this over, hand over this session to you. So, Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon from Kazakhstan. Uh, uh, first, uh, I hope everybody's doing great despite pandemic. Um, thank you, Hasith, for coordinating everything to Sri Lanka uh, Technological Campus and the uh, first Department of Library and Information Science uh, of University of Kalania, Dr. Namali Sorawira, for having this session. Uh, it won't be possible also without professional networking. And let me say thanks to, thanks to Ray Poon for linking me to Hasid. Also, currently in our university, we are still working from home and all our library programs, our services are provided remotely online. So I hope everybody's excited to hear what's marketing. Literally, when we go to market, we plan ahead of time and sometimes we list what we need. But library marketing deals with how we can support um, our, the initiatives of our organization. Thus, we are thinking 
how to grow our engagement and involve our users as well. So I have the following objectives. Okay, so as librarians, as librarians, we have our duty to ensure that services and programs reach those who need them without discrimination. So during a lockdown because of pandemic, libraries are physically closed and other libraries are now reopening and it's a good sign that the new normal has come. But we need to review our policies and guidelines. That's our marketing plan. So our services continue online. So the aims of the presentations are the, the presentation are the following to recognize the need for policy, guidelines or marketing plan improvement aligned with online library services and programs in time of pandemic to develop or strengthen marketing initiatives to avoid discontinuance of library services and share current practices promoting library programs services initiatives during pandemic and in COVID. so um what is library marketing according to ifla section on management and marketing it is a process a process of planning and executing the whole parts of concepting conception, pricing, promotion, and distribution of goods, services, programs to create exchanges between individual and organization goals to meet their satisfaction. So the purpose of marketing is to achieve organizational objectives, to fulfill the target market's need. And th those are our customers, our patrons. Library marketing is something that we do, but probably we are not aware of or the process is incomplete. So, um, so it's, it's my question is this library marketing so probably at first glance you may say yes so um but this is more of a promotion so communication is the key how you inform the users about it so your services are online now so you communicate through social media so this is a kind of promotion so an example would be a campaign as well so like for example one of the deans in North Carolina School of Library, Irene Owen, said that marketing is always misunderstood by librarians as a means to just providing promotion or public relations, which is promotion and public relations, just one aspect of library marketing, because they're talking also about the product, the price, the place, and other things. So public relations is just a subset of promotion. Now, um, Wayne Gant, who is also a, a professor of library information science, said that there are four P's of marketing. And the four P's of marketing are the following, the product, the price, the place, and promotion. So um, actually she, she created, or she's an author of one of the books entitled Customer Service Excellence. So you can buy it through American Library Association. Let's discuss one by one. First is the product. Those, these are the programs and services that the library provides to its users. So let's say you have your interlibrary loan, your document delivery, or you have your book delivery service, or other programs such as uh, information literacy program, outreach programs, and any other programs. Second one is the price. You have to put a cost or the fees to any kind of program that you have. So when you produce a product, it has some budget we need to think about how much do we need for each service or program the next one is the place the location where products are distributed meaning where is how do we distribute material so let's say if we are in the counter of a library then we are distributing it in the physical space of the counter or other spaces in the library but right now because it's pandemic and we are staying from home then we can distribute it online next and the last Part of the P is a promotion, which is who are your target users and how you can communicate it to them. So the, how the library communicate depends on kinds of um, methods you want. So you have to identify these target users so that you can um, segment um, each kind of service you want to develop and provide it to each kind of user. Let's say you want to distribute or create some kind of things like Let's say business card. Business card is one kind of promotion tool to, to your users as well, so that they would get to know who are the librarians on campus. Now, speaking of promotion, but I don't know if how many how many people are now online. So I, I was asking, I, I would like to ask them something like, can we make this trending topic on promotion that we are promoting library marketing? So if they can just promote hashtag library marketing 2020 and then they 
they added text or a photo in all their social media accounts, let's say Twitter, uh, Facebook, or Instagram, or whatever. So aside from the four Ps by Wenger and um, Iwo James and Hali Zunifidze, um added three more Ps to the four Ps. And the fifth P is the physical evidence. But right now, because it's pandemic, we can actually recreate physical evidence to virtual library evidence. So if it's if we're talking about physical library space, we're talking about how environment friendly are the spaces. Um, do we even check uh, aesthetics of the library? Let's say how how do we look into the layout of the library, the furnishings, the ambience, so on and so forth. But right now, because it's a virtual library, we need to talk about accessibility issues. Um, do we even provide a space online where each of the services can be transferred or communicated into text to speech or voice recognition, or we are provo providing subtitles, something like that. The next key is process. Now, this is very important because we need to talk about now policies and procedures or the flow of activities. We need to provide prompt and efficient uh, immediate service response now. Um, when, when coronavirus came, then we are all surprised. So we need to make sure that we need to be swift and act immediately on what to do next. And we have to revise and review our policies and procedures, the whole process again. And the last one are the people, us, the experts. How, how do we provide excellent service? It's not enough that we are experts, but we cannot provide excellent service. So those are two different things. Let's say you are, yes, you are, you are an expert in one field, but the way you provide the service is not good. So it's it's saying that when when there's a good result, people will be happy and happiness will encourage everyone to go back and go back to your library and talk to you again and ask for your help. So let's say one of my examples would be, yes, a, prof a professor just tagged me on Facebook asking me, can you order this? And I said, yes, it's ordered now. Even if it's social media, it's not formal. It's an informal way, but still, it can just tag you anywhere and you just provide your service. Just record it that some transaction happened even in social media accounts. Now, there is a marketing cycle. As what Dempsey said, Dempsey is also an expert in library marketing. So she provided or shared the cycle of true marketing. So as you can see here, first is to research your audience, right? So if you research your audience here, what she, she meant by this is you want to know who your patrons are. Um, who are these people that you want to serve? So it's the first great step um, to identify target market. So get some data about them, know the demographics. How many of the students are using different kinds of social media? Let's say in Kazakhstan, they have a different kind of social media, which is not Facebook, let's say DK. How many are using it? And you, you get to know um, the trends now. So determine also, let's say, faculty members living on campus. So get to know their religious practices and maybe buy ebooks related to it. So, or how about those non-users? Identify and know why they don't go to the library or use the library at all. Segmentation is the next part of it. So you have to make sure you know your target group. So you have to recognize that you have a very diverse population. Let's say, um, so and on the fall semester, you have a very novice freshman student who doesn't know how to use library databases. You have a newly hired teacher, let's say. You have an experienced senior scientist or a teaching fellow, or perhaps children of faculty members living on campus. So what to do? You have to know their needs. So in our case, we have, in, we have Russian speaking citizens, Kazakh speaking, English speaking. So you, know, you need to know what language do they use as well. Next is to set goals and targets. So this element talks about measuring our goals. It can be quantitative, it can be qualitative. So let's say that you want to increase the number of views of usage. So how are you going to do that? Let's say you want to know undergraduate students um, if they use a specific service, or you want to know how many engagements do you get each week in posting something in your social media account. So Know your goals and set your targets. Next is uh, identify products and services. So list down again all your programs, enumerate them. You, you don't realize that because of your, a lot of programs or services that you offer, 
there are items there that are not being used at all. So you have to evaluate them, which is actually the next step also. Um, let's say there is one faculty who would approach you and say, can you offer me this service? But you know that this service is already available. So what you need to do is just to remind them, oh, we have this service already, maybe you're not aware. So just um, repeat it as needed. And if there are other possibilities to, to create a new service, then start thinking about it, right? Um, also build a connection. Um, let's say there is a new set of officers of the student council or student organizations or joint teaching and learning committees or join the council of dean meetings. What I do, if there is a new set of officers for student council, I congratulate them and then I tell them that these are the services of the library you might want to include in your next plan as well for some activities of collaboration with the library. And then identify your competition. So you establish connections already. So um, you will also learn what they're doing. So you may be surprised that other departments in the university are also doing the same thing. For example, in our case, we have the Writing Center, and the Writing Center also conducts plagiarism sessions. Same with academic tours. So let's say call a meeting and invite them. Um, share common things and discuss what steps to do next. Maybe they can focus on something else and the library can focus on something else. And also, what happened? So there. We are trying to protect the image of the library. So going back to that competition, how can the library ensure its relevance now, right? So by building partnerships, then we are getting stronger. We are making sure that patrons know where to go in times of their information need. So sometimes we are just, maybe students are lazy to check, giving you all the sets of questions, but you can tell them in such a nice way that there is, maybe you forgot to do this kind of method while searching, right? So you need to explain it again. And use your available resources and make sure because you are the library, be as authoritative as possible. Finally, success. So evaluate your success. So it's time you create or plan a service. Make sure part of it is to evaluate it. Let's say at a comment spot, you are creating a libguide and there's a comment spot. Is this guide good enough for you? Or send us an email what you think about this, right? So each time there are, you finish conducting a session. So ask a survey form, create via Qualtrics or Google Forms, whatever, and send it to them. Just add, ask for their feedback. So it might be helpful for them as well. And for you to know what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, what services you need to improve, something like that. And also now we go to the marketing plan. But before we proceed writing your marketing plan, you have to make sure that you review your library mission statement one more time. And there are prerequisites to that. Do you know by heart what the parents organization strategic plan? So be before you set that one, you have to know and review the institution's organization or strategic plan of the institution. You have to know the whole library strategic plan before you create your marketing plan. And you have to, again, review the seven P's, right? The product, the price, place, promotion, physical evidence, process, and people. Now, there are steps to basic marketing plan. And first is the target market. So again, let's say we focus on faculty members, right? So write your plan specifically for faculty members and write a specific or another plan for, for students, for, for staff, for, for researchers, something like that. And services, mention that you are experts. You are experts in doing literature search and literature review, something like that. And while you know already the competition, Know why your users prefer to go to other places rather than going to the library. Why they attend other sessions of other university departments rather than going. But find and explore and know the reasons why. And finally, I know fourth is promotion. So try to speak and learn their language. Make a catchy poster. What's new now? Maybe create a poster that has some theme, thematic, uh, maybe feel of Netflix, the Netflix vibe or whatever. So you have to also find people who are creative. It's not enough that in a marketing group, there's only one or two people. You have to have a team that can create all this good stuff for you. And finally, evaluate, which is uh, to know how your programs and services did well. If not, try another kind of program, let's say, because there are failed programs too.
and we have to recognize that. Now, let's say you, you completed that cycle and now you're, you're on your way to write your marketing plan. You have to execute your plan accordingly. And there are these steps which you will really need to do because the first phase is consolidating and then writing them. And the next part of it is to really do that one. So it's the whole marketing cycle. Let's say, for example, you have to revisit your past library marketing plans. This is an example online, which you can check later on. It's the Galway Mayo Institute uh, of Technology, and the marketing plan is available online. This may be old, 2009 to 2012, but it may be useful for you. Let's say, let's check their example. So one of their objectives is to increase the database usage by 10%. So their target market are the undergraduate students. Forget about the graduate students. As I mentioned, you have to create another plan for them. So what are the strategies? First, they continue promotion of electronic. We do that most of the time, continuing promotion, right? Now, what they want to achieve is that for June of that year, they have to make sure that they have ready statistics to, to evaluate what happened, right? And offer training sessions that will make sure that they will really use it. So this is just one objective specifically for undergraduate students. Now, uh, let's see. Okay. Oh, it's coming. Okay, now, this is for example, in our university now, this, this, the situation made us realize that we need to act immediately because you don't know it's coming, but you heard news already globally. So they, they called the help of IT departments and library and sit down and consult us how are we going to make sure information is accessible to users? Now you have to make sure because physical library will be closed. So what to do next? So make sure ebooks are there already. So instead of buying, uh, as we can buy silk print materials, but we have to ensure that we can also buy the equivalent of that title in ebook format, right? So that research can be still be done remotely. That some softwares can still be accessible remotely. So this is the challenge for libraries and IT departments. So, and you have to ask yourself, um, how can these things help us in the future? It's a good marketing. They call the library because they believe that you can provide and it's, it's your support to the whole university. So it's a good promotion in the future. That's, and it also means that they're investing for the welfare of the library and the users of the library as well. So uh, another example would be because we are turning into virtual, so our inter our information literacy programs to incoming first year students in the new normal would be like this. So you have to cre recreate now your marketing plan. So how do you do that? So the objective is to make sure IL skills of the first year students to develop. And how are you going to do that? Continue collaborating with faculty members. We have to make sure our lib guides are revised accordingly and add more details as much as possible. And we converted our presentations now, our modules in audio recorded. So it may be synchronous or asynchronous and constant promotion of webinars and customized virtual sessions. So we have to do this by the whole fall semester. And our outcome would be like, we need to assess again information, uh, information literacy. We have a survey form after each session and we ask students about their feedback. Uh, the, the number of live guide views maybe because we're recreating them again and adding some lib guides and number of webinars conducted because we also measured them, how many we did and how was it. So don't think about your competitors now, just focus on the library, right? And make sure that you are focused on making sure that the institutional agenda is there. So you have to think and look back what should be done. So next would be here. How do we help our community remotely? So we prepared this libguide, like how to access our e-journals, how to access e-textbooks, because this libguide is visible online and is valuable for them. It's available 24 seven, FAQs were created. So even if librarians are offline, they can still refer to these guides for online, as long as they have internet connection, of course, because it's another challenge and it's another problem. Um, also, of course, they can just connect with us anytime. 
uh, of course, uh, our chat services can only be during office hours still. We are working from home, but we answer them. They can set an appointment if they want to. So this is now the virtual place, right? And the next one example we, will be an example of our uh, synchronous way of teaching our students. So we are still being invited by different classes to conduct information literacy sources. <laughs> So that's just an example that we are still conducting information literacy courses online. And also we have these recorded slides that we are now preparing for the course. So this is just an example. So I'll just go to the next slide. So next slide would be, let's define now because we're talking about pandemic and infodemic, right? And part of the marketing plan. So let's just discuss briefly what infodemic is because we know pandemic is a worldwide spread of a new disease according to WHO. So now there is a rapid spread of false information that may include rumors, gossip, and we are a library. How can we help our users not to be involved and not sharing um, this false information? So that's infodemic, right? And it will affect even the way they do research. Now that we are off tangent with them, we are just doing online. And because of virtual um, classes, online classes, the in, there is an increasing number of plagiarism too. And we have to make sure that they are not doing that. So uh, that's infodemic for now. If you want to learn more about infodemic, there is another webinar uh, about this, which I can share later, which was conducted before. But let's say even you are not a medical library or a health library, you can still provide and think about the questions. Let's say this example was done previously study on H1N1 or, or maybe SARS. Right now it's pandemic. You have to think also of what questions they can ask. And these questions may be relevant to their studies too. Let's say somebody is doing a policy on how to ensure that the next wave of coronavirus will come, how to do that. So it will also affect libraries and let's make sure we are ready to answer them and provide them possible links and not only focus on our other services. This is an example. Let's say you want to curtail infodemic, right? As part of our library initiative, we compiled a list of reliable sources. of Better if it's localized. So make, give uh, global links to WHO, CDC, but also uh, compile examples or credible sources that are available locally, which students or local students can understand. Let's say now that um, we are aware that Vietnam is still being uploaded for their zero case of death for coronavirus. So the data I'm using is from last um, May 26, and they are still focusing on measures to ensure no one will fall for the virus. So I'm giving now examples of how libraries should adapt. I'm still promoting their services indirectly just to come to the library let's say this one is a the Hanoi university of science and technology in hanoi in vietnam it encourages their students to come to the library even though coronavirus is not i mean the the cases of coronavirus is still small in in vietnam but they want to encourage students to come because they are still they are providing strict measures on how not to contract the virus so so one way of promoting their library is still they provide resources on how to control this virus. Um, next is like reach out. Yeah, that's a way of reaching out. So a while ago, I provided uh, a libguide. Also create your own FAQs. So setting aside marketing plan, emergency situations require immediate responses, right? So again, FAQs may be 24 seven without real time librarian who can answer, but they can refer to this FAQ. Again, a lot of examples from the British Library. Everybody's active now and visible. They said libraries are dead. Like, so one of the uh, initiatives of British Library is to tell traveling stories or curate a map of collection, just like their library, and they upload it online. How about NTU Library? They still provide online sessions on how to use EndNote. Also, this Chinese University of Hong Kong Library is giving a service on just if you want to communicate with us. What's up, a librarian? So that's it. Um, also, online storytelling for children, for school libraries. Parents may be busy, so probably you can just uh, let your your 
children go online and give the link to some online um, li libraries that conduct online storytelling, something like that. And also in our library, we still continue to communicate with our users by promoting different kinds of activities. Due to pandemic, we are also uh, uploading stress relief uh, examples. Let's say we, we upload relaxing music episodes, how to deal with time management during pandemic. We partnered with our psychological counseling center so we can offer webinars to support students encountering depression and stress. Also, um, we can make use of our YouTube accounts. This is a time, like let's say we finished one webinar and we compile them and upload them as part of the playlist in our YouTube accounts. Right? So again, so finally, just to summarize, marketing has its own benefits for the library. So first is to achieve customer satisfaction because in the long run, patrons will remember what we did for them, right? If they're happy, we will remember. And it's a long-term customer remittance. We we establish that one. It's and once they know that you provide a good service, they will always come to you. Have the opportunity to introduce new information products because, as a library, you have to be creative as well. Like for example, the Library of Congress invited this youth ambassador who is an award-winning author and talk to the to students, talk to children about how to fight negative impact young people in the future. Also increase the customer base of the library. We have to make sure that there is an optimal utilization of library products and services. We don't want to create something that nobody will use, right? So we encourage them, we strongly encourage them. Here are my references. And if you have questions, you can always email me. This is my email address. And again, thank you again to uh, SLTC and the University of Kalinika, Elania, Department of Library and Science. Thank you so much. And uh, I have uh, two questions. Uh, uh, the first one is, uh, what is the trend of using another uh, library and courses and services? Uh, do you during this week. I'm sorry, there's a problem with the audio. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, what is the trend of using uh, Nazarbayev University resources, library resources and services during this time? This question yeah. asked from uh, Joanne from uh, Philippines. Yeah, thanks. thanks for that question. Trend of using, right? Currently, we're also studying them. Let's say we focus on um, number of, we, we're still not finished because we're still compiling data, but the first day that we started um, work from home, let's say it was March 16, until the present time, we are collecting data to check and we are comparing them on a three-year study from uh, 27, 2018, 2019, 2020 to check what kind of, or how did it increase the number of chat services, the increase of interlibrary loan, and what else? The increase of emails that we get. Uh, what is the difference between a normal time of the same year, of the same month of the previous two years, and currently this year? So, I but judging on the number of uh, requests that we receive, it's in, it increased tremendously because I I don't know how to answer that, but we receive a lot of chat requests now, um, a lot of interlibrary, of course, interlibrary loan because they cannot access physical books. So they want electronic copies. And our role is just to provide it to them. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. And the second question, uh, uh, how, do you, uh, how do you promote the resources among uh, those who are not familiar in a city? Uh, with the situation like those who are not familiar so currently what we can do is just to keep on um posting in our social media accounts also we created the lib guide it's like this it's not only the library who's doing this so in conjunction with the university they compiled every time they send an email they remind the community if you want to use the service here are the services of the library 
right now during pandemic. We created LibGuide for this, which they can refer. It's like a one one stop shop where everything of everything about our services are indicated so they won't be lost. Anyway, if they have problems, they can always communicate with the librarians because we have public librarians for each discipline. Let's say they are students from the Graduate School of Education and they just have need to contact me. So um, if they're lost somehow, there are ways there in, in our portal where they can just directly email us, send um, an, uh, a request to any of our work, um, ask a librarian platform or just, you know, set an appointment with us because we have consultation services as well. Uh, you know, yeah. Okay, right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. App. And actually, there are so many questions that uh, within that uh, limited time. Honorable President of the Sri Lanka Technological Campus, Engineer Mr. Ranjit Rubasigna, and all the participants. It is my privilege to have been asked to propose a word of thank on this occasion. First, my heartfelt gratitude to the Sri Lanka Technological Campus for entrusting me with the responsibility and opportunity of conducting this webinar. My heartfelt gratitude for our guest speaker for this webinar, Mr. Joseph Yap. The insight you have shared with us this evening are invaluable and it was truly an honor to you with us today. I hope that we may collaborate with you in future. And on behalf of the Sri Lanka Technological Campus, I extend a very heart -worth thankful or gratitude to all the participants who honored us with their presence and took valuable time of your busy schedule to join us. I especially express my utmost appreciation to thank to Dr. Namali Suravira, the head of department of the Library and Information Science Department at the University of Kalania, in collaborating with us towards the success of this event. The Sri Lanka Technology Campus will be honored to be in this partnership for future programs as well. A warm thank to Dr. Nanda Gunawardana, the Director of the Research and International Affairs for, this val for his valuable instructions and my gratitude also our marketing team, Manduli, Akhtir, Gihan and his team. I'm also so grateful to uh, my library friends for the various forms of support you lend to us to success this event. And last, but certainly not least, a very big thank to our IT lead, Charit, Mano, Shashi, Prangana, Prasika, and all without whom this event would not have been possible. Your contribution of immense support from beginning to the end of this program have made an endeavor a success. Now, as we close for the session, for this evening, I wish to take this opportunity to cordially invite you all to join us again soon for the next webinar. Thank you once again for your presence and support. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay informed. Thank you.